In this video on creating a split level design, we'll cover setting the floor and ceiling heights, creating a foundation, adding stairs, and then building a simple style roof. Let's begin with the floor and ceiling heights on this sample plan. For this project, I'm going to take the garage on the left. I'm going to set it to be below the main living area in the center at 30 inches. I'm going to do the same thing with the upper living area. I'm going to set it to be 30 inches above. As I begin inside the garage by double clicking on the room, on the structure panel, I'm going to come into the floor area. And I'm going to set minus 30 inches. When I press the tab key, notice what happens to the rough ceiling. It changes to 151 inches, increasing it. If I want to set it to have the exact same ceiling height, I can use the set as default value and set it at 121 inches and an eighth. In the 3D view, as I rotate around, you can see what the ceiling has done and what the bottom of the floor has done. We also see a gap in there that will get fixed when we add the foundation. Let's do the same thing with the upper room. Double click inside the room. On the floor, I'm going to add 30 inches. As I press the tab key, you can see the rough ceiling has changed to 91 inches. If I use the set as default option in the story pole diagram, you can see that that's now going to be a 10 foot ceiling. So for the split level, you can see that it's cascading from the lowest point in the garage to the upper point in the upper living area. Let's take a look at building the foundation so that we can adjust this. And I'm going to do this a couple of different times so you can see a few different options. Underneath the build menu for floor and foundation, I'm going to come over and the first thing I want to point to is that I'm going to build this with stem walls that are about 40 inches, 39 and a half inches high. And it's not set to be automatically built. When I do that, there is an option that you can choose to step the floor and ceiling elevations to match the floor. You can see that it's stepping each one of those. And let's just press the undo button one time. And let's go back into the build foundation. So as I go back into the build foundation and I turn the automatic foundation option on, notice that the dialog to step those does not come in. And you can now see that it's slightly different usually anticipating what the depth of the garage may be. And so you may get slightly different results if you turn on the automatic foundation. Let's take a look at making a few adjustments to the foundation. I'm going to tile my screen, Shift F6 on the keyboard. First, let's take a look at the garage. If I wanted the garage foundation footings to come down and match the footings in the main living area, I can click on this in 3D and pull those down, or I can do it in elevation. I'll show you that approach on the other side of the design. To pull these walls, and I want to pull all of the garage walls down at that same level. In the main living area, if you take a look inside the dialog, the floor below on the footing in the story pole is showing that it's at 50 inches and a quarter. So let's go over into the garage. The bottom of the footing in the garage is showing at 30 inches, a difference of 20 and a quarter inches. And what I want to do for the stem wall is I want to take that stem wall and I want to add the 20 inches and a quarter. So I'm just going to come in, add 20 inches and a quarter. So it'll be plus 20 inches and a quarter. Press the tab key. That's going to turn off the automatic foundation. We'll go ahead and accept that change. And now you can see that pulled those walls down. Now if you want to pull other walls down, you can easily click on here and pull this down. I sometimes find this easier to do it in an elevation view and more accurate. Let's take a look over in the floor plan view. Let's use the elevation tool. Let's shoot an elevation through the front of the house. As I zoom in, maybe I'll toggle my crosshairs on so it's a little bit easier to see. I can now pull that down. I can snap on to the foundation footing from the wall in the center. When this wall is selected on the foundation, there's a break tool in my menu system. It's on the bottom portion. You see the break. I can come over here, click on the break, and then if I wanted to pull that up, maybe pull that up to where it snaps to the other side. 
and now I've created a stepped foundation, a little easier to maybe see in the 3D overview. And as I kind of rotate around, that footing is now stepped. Depending on how your terrain is going to come in, you can use those breaks and pull those around to get them exact. You can also dimension those in your elevation view. Next, I want to take a look at building a second story for the design. As I move up to the main floor, you can see the foundation, the main floor. I'm going to build a second story that will be over the main portion and garage area. Let's come up into the build menu and for build floor, let's build a new floor. And I'm going to derive the second floor from the main floor. Come in and I'm actually going to change this. I'm going to say plus 12 inches so I have a 9 foot ceiling. Except all of the other defaults here. And as that second floor builds, you can see the stair step approach to the ceilings. They're all about 30 inches in difference between the cascade here. And what I want to set up is I want to remove the floor plan off to the far right side. Let me just move over into the floor plan view here. A little bit of modification in here. I'm going to take that exterior wall. I'm just going to drag that to the end. And then I'm going to hold my shift key down. I'm going to select the other walls, delete them. And now I have a floor plan as you look at the reference display that is only over the portion of the garage and the main living area. Next, I want to take a look at adding stairs between the different levels. The first thing I want to do is on level one is add a set of stairs between the garage and the main living and we'll do the same thing up to the upper living. Use the stair tool. If you click near an opening it will generate the stairs from platform to platform typically. If you need to do modifications to these stairs maybe make them a little wider. I'll open them up by double clicking on them. On the railing move the railing on the right hand side. Same thing if I were to move over into the floor plan view. Let me close the elevation view as long as I have that up. In the floor plan view same approach as I come over into the floor plan, use the stair tool, click near the opening. So I'll leave my cursor here for just a second. Click, it should connect up to that platform. And then I'll just do a slight modification of the stairs, make them just a little bit larger. And then for the stairway that moves from the main living up to the second floor, it's going to be difficult to get a set of stairs this is a very small sample that I have open. When I use the stair tool and I click, you can see how long these stairs are going to be. So I'm going to use the L-shaped stair tool. Come over, use the L-shaped stair tool, accept the defaults. And then as I kind of move over and control which the direction is, that'll be pretty tight inside for the door. Let's go ahead and peek at this in our 3D view. So you can see that it's pretty close in there. And then as we move up to the floor above, I'm just going to click on the stair, get a little bit closer there. There is a tool for the stairs that is Create Auto Stairwell. So I kind of hover my cursor over that in the bottom portion of the menu. And then that will generate the stairwell as we kind of peek down. You can see that stairwell. Now the final thing we want to do for the design is create the roof. So I close this 3D view and I take a full 3D view overview. Currently the structure is without a roof and you can see where the wall is getting cut in some places. Let's go through and look at building the roof. I'll use a shortcut here to get to the build roof dialog. I'm going to turn on the automatic roof and then you can see that I've got the pitch set at 2 and 12 and I'm just going to accept the default here and build an automatic roof. Now as I rotate around and we take a look, there may be situations depending on what you've done to create the design. Some of the walls may need adjusting. As I zoom real close in here, you can see that this wall in here is probably using a siding six wall that came from the floor below. In fact, let's just use the cross section slider and let's take a look inside here. We'll slide that over so we can actually take a look a little bit closer. So you can see this inside wall is actually an interior wall, either an interior four or an interior six. And it has she rock on it. The upper wall has just been inherited from it. So I'm just going to click on that, double click to open it up, and I'm going to change it to a slap siding six. Program's going to probably say that's going to make a change to your automatic generated attic walls and that's okay because I want to make sure that it matches. 
We'll go ahead and remove the split section and then we can take a look and there is the split story. You can learn more about creating your split story designs by referring to the help file as well as our knowledge base articles has an article on creating a split level.